we're going to get one of these. Oh. Trixie cam. <laughs> yes. Take us to the points of interest. Oh, wow. Trixie pedicab tours can be arranged throughout Barcelona. Ours begins 10 minutes from the hotel at Trixie's city centre base. Oh, hello. Bye. <laughs> Bear in mind safety, Santi. Don't go crazy. <laughs> Site one is the literally towering Christopher Columbus monument. The Italian explorer is said to have returned to this very point on Barcelona's coast after his successful voyage to America. And is it true that he's pointing in the wrong direction? That's right. Yeah, oh, the, he, he should see. He should be pointing to the west. Yes, That's to right. America. Maybe they should have just had him go. <laughs> But as we attempt to appreciate the Gothic architecture of the 14th century Santa Maria church... That's amazing. Our tour is vindictively ruined by one of Barcelona's rare rainy spells. The thought of getting wet is so appalling that we agree to take shelter in a museum of all places. And it happens to be the most popular one in all of Barcelona. Are you excited by the prospects of a football museum? Well, I wasn't, but I am now we're here. I feel it's my duty to pour scorn on this in a glib way. Gracias. Thank you very much. With no emotional connection to football whatsoever, Cathy and I are uniquely placed to dispassionately survey this cathedral to the art of ball kicking. Well, here we are in the trophy room. Yeah. The website advertises this as a tour of emotion. I, I'm, I am getting a bit stirred up. Boredom is an emotion, isn't it? Boredom is an emotion, yeah. Yeah. I can't help but be impressed. It's arbitrary, though. They've been going forever. Oh, now, these are nice and fancy. The oh. Catalan Cup, you oh, see. God, thank God those are here. I could be here for minutes. <laughs> Can we pick up the pace a bit? Because these seem quite similar to the other ones. Barcelona FC's greatest kicker of balls is genuinely called Mr. Messi and has a whole area dedicated just to him and how good he's supposedly meant to be. But of more interest to Cathy is the museum's green screen photo studio. So just stand under the light here and imagine Messi is next to you here, right? And you've got your arm around his waist. OK, so... All right, big smile. That's great. And... Do you want to have photos as well? I don't care for this team. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not? I just it's... don't care about football. Just stand next to Messi. OK. Just pretend to know him for the All picture. Right. Just pretend he's your friend. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> okay. get me. I just need you to put, put this Messi arm out. Why would I wouldn't touch Messi. I don't know him. <laughs> it's inappropriate. Do it. <laughs> Click it. You really want to take this picture this like a... that? This is... I don't want to take the picture at all. But given that the picture's being taken... <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Distressed by their lack of empathy... Give my regards to Messi. I will. I make one last search for sincerity by ascending to the apogee of the sporting basilica, the terrace. You can't not be impressed. At the volume of seats. <laughs> there, there are a lot of seats here. Enough for nearly 100,000 people, 99 and a half. Is See, it... that would frustrate me. Surely they could have fit another 500 and make it even. Yeah. It's sort of amazing, now, no? I mean, I feel bad. I'm sure there are many people who would love to be here, but in a way, life is more enjoyable if you only enjoy very few things, because the things I enjoy, I have access to. Yeah. Marbles, yeah. books, yeah. and French New Wave films. All oh, right. It's going to break my heart to leave. OK. But can we? Absolutely. Yeah, let's just do anything else. Adios. Yeah. I liked it. I, I you know. No. OK, I don't know what you did there, but I'll try and make that same face. This is good. Tiny bit sharp. This is good. <laughs> Each bottle is from Catalonia, where the majority of cava is produced. And we're told they all look different. I'm this not is, good at this. again, this is a relatively similar colour to the other ones. <laughs> it's different from the other. It is more <laughs> similar than different, I'd say, though. Adding new grapes like Chardonnay oh, hello. is said to radically alter the flavour. 
This is like giving a very fine thing to an idiot, is what you're currently doing. I have no palate. I, can't, I literally, it seems fine. Mm. I mean, no, I could taste it's more creamy. <laughs> you're getting cream? <laughs> you're, you're, not, not actual cream. Like custard cream? No. <laughs> oh. Five glasses in, we approach the nuances of carver tasting technique. Me, I was uh, like more than one year to know how to do this. You did this every morning for a year? Yes. <laughs> okay. Did you get a lot done that year? Is that what's referred to you as your lost year? <laughs> so like John Lennon in New York. And then, in a ringing endorsement of the carver tasting process, Kathy erupts with joy. Kathy's having a, uh, a small aneurysm here. <laughs> all, all I know is, say I had a sip of this, and then an hour later, someone switched glasses in this episode of Columbo that I'm in. I wouldn't go, what, what's happened? This is a completely different drink. To, I mean, I, but as I say, I have no palate. I'm not going to wait for you to thank me, so I'm just going to tell you why this is so good. <laughs> thank you. This is a clandestine restaurant. Which means what? Which means it's not always open. You have to follow it on Facebook. It's run by Ika Arauskin, who develops the food for some of Barcelona's 20 Michelin-starred restaurants and uses this place as a testing ground for new ideas. So we're basically guinea pigs? Yes, we're testers. OK. We're not here for brave potatoes. We're here for a surprisingly affordable six-course banquet of Ica's latest creations. This meal, which is designed to toy with our senses, starts with a winter landscape of truffles and dehydrated vegetables. I don't want to be a heathen, but I feel slightly alarmed there's not a plate. It's quite rich. It's quite fancy. Next, a liquefied olive in a semi-solid membrane. I'm not going to lie, I don't know how to eat this. Take the, the glass like this. OK. And you just, you yeah. know, just like a shot. Yeah. Like a shot glass of olive. Yeah. OK, you okay. go first, though. Wow. That was wholly unexpected. I'm scared. It is fine. This is why I can't do the jungle. Nat's bollocks and all that. No? There we go. How's that? I don't know whether that's going to hit the top five restaurants in Barcelona, or maybe it is. Oh. It's a bit like eating an eye. Yeah, it pops. Yeah, it does pop. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Let's bring on the... Um, <clears throat> Next course. Course three, two mini baked potatoes coated with edible clay and served with marine plankton, tests Kathy yet further. How's that? Another success. Here we go. We need a spittoon. Spittoon. An edible yucca plant in the guise of coal has more success. Overall, good. And the watermelon that looks like tuna is a mid-meal revelation. He gets his kicks giving someone like a whisper, mm. <laughs> but he's actually taken a lion bar mm. and put it in a whisper packet. Wait till they taste the peanuts, they won't know what's happened. <laughs> After a white chocolate and almond-based pudding that's disguised as a large sausage... That is good. Ica reveals his culinary climax, bubbly custard. Look at that. It's, it's amazing. God, it's like when you blow through the straw, but you don't have to do that. Hmm. I feel this is the kind of meal other people would bore you about. Take photos of it, those sort of people. Good night. <laughs>